Hey, it's Aaron. Today we're going to do an interior walkthrough in a 2023 uh, Nissan Frontier. This is the Pro 4X package um, with the V6. So very, uh, very improved truck. I don't think I've done an interior walkthrough since this new design came out. I think it was last year. Uh, might have been the year before. But uh, yeah, wonderful little truck. Uh, one of my favorites in the midsize category for a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, the biggest one being that it is all around capable. It does everything you know pretty well or better than okay um, all the way around the board as far as midsize truck capabilities go. And it is one of the lower cost options in this segment. So uh, you probably will not find a Toyota or uh, Chevy, GMC, uh, etc. in this price range with this much equipment on it. So yeah, anyway, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna walk through the whole interior here, uh, you know, left to right. I do have to preemptively apologize. I may cough or sniffle. Um, I was in Tennessee last week doing uh, some off-roading with Polaris and Tennessee is in full bloom right now and I was getting a face full of not just dirt but pollen and other stuff that really really hit me and then uh, the four hours each way of flight took their toll and I've been sick all weekend so um, yeah I just have to preemptively apologize I got a little gravel in my throat and I got some runny nose and, and cough happening it's the way it is. I'm getting old. Yeah. Anyway, let's do this walkthrough. We'll start over on the uh, right or on the left side in the usual spot and walk our way around. So we start on the door. Uh, you see the door handle here. Uh, physical lock is right here. And then you have all of these. So back windows here, front windows here. You can see only one of them is automatic. Then you can see here is the uh, lock for those windows, door locks right here, and this adjusts the side mirrors. So you turn it to the one you want and then you move it back and forth and up and down to adjust them. Over here, you can see the first of the vents right there. And then over here you see you have your tow mode button. Um, this changes your transmission mapping a little bit and a few, and a few other things to accommodate your uh, trailer back there. I don't remember the tow rating for this. I'll put it on the screen. Over here is uh, your instrument cluster and infotainment screen dimmer. And then here is your trip reset button. Down here is your parking radars. Do you want them on or not? Uh, when the light is on, the radars are on. This turns the um, 120 volt outlet on and off. That 120 volt outlet is in the bed. Down here, you got your cargo lamp. You can turn it on and off randomly, or it will come on with the uh, doors opening. Here is your hill descent. Way down there is traction control, and that's for the to lock the rear differential. Um, pretty important when you're in the really sticky stuff. And then you can see it's a manual foot-operated um, uh, parking brake. They got this cool kind of orange surround on the stereo speaker over here. Same on the other door over there. So pretty neat like that. Um, door pocket will handle one of those large water bottles right here. Um, you know, so if you like the big soccer mom water bottles, it'll fit in there. And then you have a little bit of storage back right here. Can barely get this down there. Here we go. Uh, otherwise, that's most everything underneath. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Here we go. All right. And then... Let me wobble it around a little and then we'll get to the steering wheel here. So, steering wheel, typical Nissan. Um, this is kind of their truck thing. They do this steering wheel on all of their trucks. Over here you have infotainment and uh, driver information screen controls. So this, these two up here, those are infotainment. This is driver information. This is a uh, volume control. And then this is telematics. This is for your phone. Uh, so you have voice control for the uh, voice control prompts on the infotainment right here, which are clunky. They're very, very clunky. It's the old school, ask you a question, you answer it, hopefully it understands you. And then this is uh, for the telephone. FYI, if your phone is not Bluetooth to the car, you can push this and it will prompt you through the, uh, walk you through the stuff to set your phone up with the system. 
over here is mostly cruise control. So you can see the cancel button on top, and then you can see here your accelerate, resume, um, and your coast and set. So speed up, slow down. That's basically the fastest way to say it. Uh, this turns it on and off physically. You do have to turn it on every time you start the car. It doesn't stay on when you shut the vehicle off. And this is your following distance for the adaptive cruise. The adaptive cruise is relatively aggressive for the speed you're going, so the shortest following distance is still a little longer than the Colorado tailgate. Uh, uh, yeah, that I'm kind of used to. <laughs> Even though I'm in Wyoming, when I get on the freeway, it turns into Colorado because I'm in Cheyenne and it's pretty close to Colorado. And there are a lot of Colorado transplants here and Colorado people drive like crap. Anyway, they're always in a hurry for no reason. All right, after those, up here you got the dongle for the washer wipers. So you can see that you go up, it'll just do it once, down uh, through the settings there. You can set how aggressive it is here. You pull it towards you to uh, squirt the windows. Over, over here is how you set. I think I showed it, there you go. That's how you set how aggressive it is right there. That That's what I was trying to tell you and wasn't doing a good job of. On the other side, you got signal turns. You turn, right? You signal and then turn. That's what they should be called, not turn signals because that is the wrong order. And then uh, you can see lighting here. So I have it on automatic right there and you can go through the different options. Back and forth for your brights. Instrument cluster. Over here, you got a tachometer. I guess you can use that. It might be, it'd be use, it's useful off-road a little, but not a whole ton. You, uh, I don't, there's not a whole lot of reason to have a use a tachometer in, anymore. Over here, where's my finger? Over here is your uh, mileage. So you can see it's miles per hour on top, Canuck miles per hour down there in the middle. And then down there you got your fuel, fuel levels, and over here you got engine heat. There are more I'll show them to you in a minute. There are more in the driver information screen if you want more uh, gauge information, more stuff. So you can see across the top, that stuff pretty much never changes. Outside temperature, what the latest, the latest speed sign that it's read is, amount of range you have left, theoretically, uh, and some of your safety stuff. So this is showing the blind spot is on and the lane keeping is on. Down here at the bottom, that's the uh, odometer. This is your gearing, and that tells you what, what gear you are in. Right now we are in two-wheel drive, which is rear driven. Now, looking at that center menu, let me page through it. Again, we're using this to do that. So as I page through that, I can get to these settings. Here's tire pressures, driving aids, so on. Um, when we get to this screen here, here's the auxiliary gauges. So you can see, you can also see oil heat and, uh, which one is that? There's oil and radiator. I think that's what that is. So there's some extra numbers if you want to know them. Um, the radiator is already over here, so I don't need know why you need it there, but whatever, that's cool. And then here's some more, so you can see the differential and the battery. These are really good ones. Uh, so you can see you have your um, pitch gauge, basically. This is your, uh, what do they call that, um, your horizon gauge. And then over here, this is what your drivetrain is doing. So right now, it is all going to the rear wheels, even though we're parked, uh, because we are in too high. So. Lots of little things in here. I've been using this most of the time because I like a digital speedometer. So there you go. Now, over here, there's the start button. So that's how you start it up. There's another vent. This is the four wheel drive controls. So you can see it's on too high. You can just turn the knob and you're in four high. And then, you, and then when you're there, you have to push to turn into four low. And you have to be stopped. And then this will tell you what to do. So I have to push the brake, shift down into neutral. The four low is engaged. And now you can see right there, four low. So if I wanna go back to two wheel drive, I have to reverse the entire process. Back to neutral, bleep. And there we are in two wheel drive. We just shut off the transfer case. So, there you go, that's the four wheel drive controls. That's all you have, that's all you need in here other than that hill descent you may need once in a while. Now, let's go to the infotainment screen. 
I know there's a little bit of glare in here. There's not a lot I can do about that. So you have kind of a storage cubby up here. It is rubberized. You can throw stuff in there. It will probably stay. Infotainment screen. This is the main menu. When you push this button right here, this is where you end up. Uh, you can see kind of what's going on. It's pretty simple and straightforward. There are a lot of the, these buttons don't tend to go away. They tend to stay almost every, uh, no matter where you are in the screen with a couple of exceptions. Uh, here you can see you have an audio button, mapping. This is one of the times when those will change. They're still basically the same, but they change in how they look. So it's harder to, uh, so it's a little easier to see them. Uh, they go away when you're on the cameras. Um, and that's about it. Then the camera view that you notice it was a 360 and reverse. And then here you have your uh, tracks and you can tune here and that will also change tracks. Then you have your nighttime and daytime button and your back. And this is your volume knob. You can also just push it to mute, which is what I've done right now. Then when you go down below that, here's your defrost buttons right here. Then you have your, uh, your climate controls. So this is dual climate, you can see that. So if I push auto here, it will turn on like that. And then if I want this to be a different one, I do that. Um, and then you turn it off like that so that it doesn't interfere with my microphone. This is your fan settings and so on, you get the idea. Down below that, these are the bun warmers here. This is steering wheel heat. This is parking radars. Um, so I think I said the other ones were parking, but the other ones are actually your around view radars for like blind spot and all of that on the highway. This is parking radars. You push this to turn it off like that, and then they won't go off in like the, uh, like the, uh, you know, the car wash, things like that. And then you have the bun warmers for the passenger side. Two USBs, you can see there's a C and an A. Then right here you have a spot to dump things. Um, you can put all kinds of things in here. It doesn't matter. It's rubberized. It's nice. You have a couple of grab handles, one on each side, mostly for looks. Uh, here you have your um, drink holders. Good size. They hold a lot of drinks, but if you like the little monsters, they're going to wobble, wobble around in here. There's nowhere to put them. Um, these will not hold them. They're, it, the can is smaller than that. So uh, just as an FYI, right here is a wireless charging pad. So when you put your phone in here, you move it around until it starts charging. And that will turn on to indicate that it's charging the phone. And the shifter. Shifter is pretty straightforward. Not a lot to, I don't know how to block that so you can see the stuff. But anyway, it's a uh, park reverse neutral drive. When you're in drive, you can go over to manual and manually run your gears. You have to do them from here. There are no paddles. So uh, up is plus down is minus there we go then pretty decent storage cubby down here uh there is no there are no plugs in it though uh so there's no like usb or anything down in there there is an led light that turns on over here underneath that and then here's the rest of the dashboard i really like the dash in here i love the orange uh, to go with that for highlights it's also the pro 4x orange here and then you can see the seating seating is pretty basic this is vinyl fake leather um it's pretty basic but it's 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 bolstered well enough that somebody my size at six foot three i feel pretty okay in the seat um, my biggest complaint is there is no lumbar adjustment on either side, either the driver's side or that side. Uh, so there is no way to adjust the lumbar, which for me is an important thing. Other than that, it's really good. Back seats, they are cramped. It is a, a mid-sized pickup truck. None of them have really big back seats, uh, but they are good and accommodating and decent enough. So that's pretty much what's going on in the interior here. This has a sunroof and a few other things, but... Uh, that's really what's going on in the interior of this 2023 uh, Frontier Pro 4X. Um, I really like this model truck. I think of this as the best of the just all-arounder vehicles in the mid-size pickup truck segment. Uh, it does most everything pretty well. And it's also available on dealer lots, unlike most other models right now. And uh, it is most likely available with no markup uh, right now as well because this is one of the few that just doesn't sell in hugely high volumes and Nissan has steadily been outputting them uh, so they're doing pretty well and uh, it's one of my favorites in this segment right now if you need a regular pickup truck also has as far as I know it has the best warranty available in this segment 
uh, Nissan's warranty is five years. So there you go. That's what I got. This has been Aaron. Talk to you again soon. Subscribe.